Working in this tiny ass store is probably what led to what would happen in this story. Hi, I'm Daniel. I'm a guy who works at this little shop called Two Steps. I actually used to kinda like my job, but now, now I'm not so sure. It was a really hot summer day. Weirdly enough, there were barely any customers. Like, I would expect a kid coming in and asking for an ice cream, or you know, something of that nature. But there was none of that, until this one kid entered. He entered in this very weird and clunky kind of way. By that I mean that he looked very awkward and probably was very awkward. For five whole minutes this kid was constantly walking through the aisles. He didn't even grab anything. It kind of looked like he was spinning around just because he had nothing to do. I eventually mustered up the courage to ask the kid if he wanted something. When I did, the kid stopped in his tracks and turned around. He turned around very slowly, and when I saw his face, he looked kind of sad. But that was only for a split moment. After that, he had a huge smile on his face and walked up to me. He asked me if he could have a part-time job in here, and the reason why he was walking around so much is that he didn't know who to ask. But anyways, I told the kid to sit there while I went to ask my boss if I could let this kid have a part-time job. My boss agreed, and now this kid was working with me. But ever since seeing this kid, he had a very strange aura. I still wasn't even sure what to think about the kid. He introduced himself as... Banuka. He even had that name on his tag. Anyways, back to the story. Ever since he started working here, he had this very strange odor going along with him wherever he went. It wasn't really putrid, like crap or anything, no, it, it kind of smelled like burnt plastic. The smell kind of would be like an on and off, sometimes you'd start smelling it and sometimes it would go away. At first I wasn't really bothered, maybe he had something in his pockets or something, but then it got serious when my boss started to smell it too and she didn't like it. So one day I walked up to this Banuka kid and told him that he didn't smell too nice, but then he quickly changed the conversation to talking about his YouTube channel. He told me the name of his channel was Cash Banuka and that he would post crudely recorded video game speedruns. He sounded very passionate about what he was talking about, but I wasn't really into it. I just wanted to tell him to go home and take a damn shower, but after he was done talking, something truly bizarre happened. He completely froze. He didn't move a single muscle. The only thing he moved were his eyes. He looked in every single direction humanly possible. It went on like this for 10 seconds, but then he broke out of that trance and ran out of the store. I was afraid that my boss would get angry at the fact that this kid just ran out of the store, so I quickly cooked up a lie and said that I told the kid to go home and take a quick shower. Now, that was a really weird encounter, but the one thing that truly remained in my mind for that entire time was his YouTube channel. When I got home, the very first thing I did was pop up my PC and check out his YouTube channel. It took a while to find his channel because it wasn't really that popular, but eventually I found it. But checking his channel, something was immediately off. His profile picture was that of the video game character Crash Bandicoot, but there was something off about Crash. He was mangled and very weird looking and his channel banner was completely black. When I went to check his videos, there was only one. The thumbnail was jet black, just like the banner. It had no title and no further description. When I started the video, there was nothing, not even any volume. That was until a familiar voice started to speak. It was Banuka but his voice was somewhat distorted. I mean, sure, you could still tell it was him, but he just didn't sound right. But after that, I started to smell something. That familiar smell of the burning plastic. Now the smell was stronger than ever. However, the smell quickly turned from burning plastic to rotten flesh. 
but I nearly had a heart attack when I started to hear loud pounding on my door. You know that feeling when you get scared and then your entire body feels cold for a second? Yeah, that's the feeling I had. At first, I thought it was a robbery, but then I heard a howling sound coming from downstairs and from outside. There was absolutely no way in hell that was a robber, and I wasn't going down there to check. Whatever was out there, it was pissed and was thirsty for blood. I tried to look out the window and see what the hell that thing was. I didn't really see anything besides what looked like intestines riveting and thrashing in the air like an octopus's tentacles. At this point, I was shaking in fear and I had goosebumps. But then, I heard the sound of the door slamming open. My heart stopped once I heard another one of these goddamn howling noises. First thing I did was quietly run up to the door and close it as silently as I could and lock it. I did most of that successfully, but the locking sound was a bit too loud for my taste. Next thing I did was go and close myself in the closet. And then I called 911 and told them what happened. They told me they were on their way, and I told them to get here as fast as possible because whatever that thing was, it was ravaging all of the rooms down below. You could hear all of the furniture thrashing around and being broken, and the creature was also howling in anger. I was imagining all of the scenarios that could happen, but then I snapped back to reality once I started to hear loud thumping on my stairs. It was coming up. I was struggling not to breathe too loudly because it might hear me. All the while I could hear and even feel its body through the floor slithering up the stairs. And all of that slithering and crashing into the stairs ended when the creature was standing right behind my room's door. You could hear its nasty breath even through the door and from the closet. But then everything fell silent. Even that animal or creature, whatever the hell it was, stopped breathing so heavily. But I knew it was still behind that door. I didn't hear it slither away. It went like this for th around 30 seconds. Until the creature had enough and bashed open the door. After that, it immediately started to trash my entire room. It broke my bed in two. But then it stopped in the middle of my room and started laughing maniacally in a demonic voice. But then, the creature started to speak. It said, Daniel, come out from hiding. I was terrified. How the hell did this thing know my name? But then... It struck me. It was Banuka, a very mangled and disturbing looking version of him. His jaw was hanging down in a really disturbing way, making a smile. His eyes were virtually non-existent, they were just black holes. His finger bones pierced through the skin and formed claws. His arms were also unnaturally long. His stomach was slit wide open and his intestines crawled out of there and started moving around just like earlier. And he smelled like a goddamn graveyard. Last thing he did, he walked up to the closet and opened the doors. Me and the rest of the police officers went into the house. It was completely trashed. Everything was cracked, broken, and beaten in. As we went up into the teenager's room, we found a dead body. It was cut up in 13 different pieces and put in an order that spelled dead. After more research and DNA testing, it was revealed that this was the body of Daniel Cranston. The murderer left without a trace.